This is truly gonna be a medley of the very best tomatoes that I grew in the garden this year. The next ingredient is about a half a green pepper, a half a red bell pepper, and a half of a cucumber. Simple stuff. Then just for fun, because when I was out in the garden, I harvested some of those padrone peppers that I featured in a video on tapas the other day. A hundred of them are mild, but one in a hundred has some kick to it. So we're gonna play a little Russian roulette today. I'm going to pick one of these and throw it in the blender too and see if we come up with a spicy gazpacho or the traditional mild and very flavorful gazpacho. If it's spicy, I won't be adding a shake or two of pepper. But if it isn't, we'll probably add a bit of this, a little bit of Mediterranean sea salt, a half of garlic, because it wouldn't be Spanish if it weren't for garlic, and a half to about a quarter of this onion. The final ingredients are a piece of this fresh baguette I picked up at the bakery this morning. A little bit, about a tablespoon of sherry vinegar from Jerez, and Arbequina olive oil from Spain. The final ingredient, if you'd call it an ingredient, is going to be 200 milliliters of water. And that will do according to how thick or thin we want the soup. We may not use all of the 200 mil, but that's generally where I end up when I'm done with the dish. So let's get started. Are you ready for a fresh, quick soup? Don't blink, this won't take very long. We'll go ahead and start cutting up the peppers. I'm just making them a little bit easier for the blender to manage. So you don't have to go through this step, but I like to. Half a bell pepper in the blender. Half a green pepper in the blender. And you'll notice, I'm not trimming the cucumber. You don't have to take the skin off. It's just as healthy with the skin on, and it won't make a big difference. I've used about half of this cucumber. Now, the mysterious padrone pepper, and we'll see if it ends up being a spicy dish or not. And I wanted to get a little bit of each of these flavorful tomatoes in there, beginning with these baby-sized San Marzano's, the very lemony flavored green zebras. And these tomatoes are not typical of Spain, but some of these others, like the Roth, the Chianti, all of these, very easy to find in Spain and even easier to grow. It's one of the reasons they call Spain the vegetable basket of the European Union. Everybody gets their fruits and vegetables from Spain. And a couple of the iconic uh, Spanish rock tomatoes. You would not believe how flavorful these are. The first year I was here, I went to the grocery store in February and I saw these pretty dark green looking tomatoes and I thought, they're selling them all over, they must be good. I bought a few, I tasted them. They are extraordinary, just packed with flavor. And a quarter of an onion. And I don't really want to add more than that to it because I want a kind of mild dish. And remember, we don't know what that pigeon pepper is going to bring to it. A little bit of garlic. That tablespoon of sherry vinegar I mentioned. I'll put a little bit of salt in, about a teaspoon and we'll check it. And the final ingredient to give it a little bit of heft is going to be a small amount of bread. I like to add this. It simply gives it a little bit more lift. And now the water, I'm gonna add most of the water because I've got a pretty full container. Actually, I'll go ahead and uh, add it all. I've got a pretty full container of vegetables in here. so. It's gonna need that moisture. And finally, I'm adding the 120 milliliters of 
extra virgin olive oil. That's it. So let's blend this up. And see how we do. That's it. Now, if you want to strain it, some people like it strained. I don't. You can do that. But let's taste it, see if it needs any more salt or any more sherry vinegar. I think it's got plenty of other healthy ingredients in here. The thickness is really nice. But that Padron pepper was not one of the spicy ones. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little pepper just to give it a little bit more balance. Not much though. Pepper is not that common of an ingredient in Spain. Spanish cooking, unlike South American cooking and Mexican cooking, is much milder. And that spice that you typically get from the South American countries isn't something they favor in Spain. Now the true taste test will be after this chills for a couple of hours. In fact, if you want to let it go overnight, even better. The flavors get a chance to meld and get a little bit more integrated and a little bit more powerful. I like it that way, but if you're hungry and it's lunchtime, don't worry about it. It'll be just as tasty. It's been a couple of hours and we're ready to garnish the soup and enjoy lunch. So I'm gonna start with tasting it. Remember we said we'd wanna check it to see if the salt level was right. I like it. I don't think it needs anything else. It has a little bit of a flavor of pepper and that's good too, but not too much. And we're going to pour this creamy, soup right into the bowl. And we're gonna finish with a little bit of garnish. The thing I love about making this kind of soup is that after you've done the little bit of work it took to put this in the blender and put it together, you got a couple of hours. You can relax, you can work on another dish, you can prepare the garnish, which is what I did. I diced up a little bit of the red bell pepper and the green bell pepper and I'm going to add just a little bit of the crunch of fried onions because I just love the flavor so much. You have to be a little careful when you're garnishing this because if you go too high when you're pu putting them in, hands too high, they'll float right to the bottom and we want to keep all this pretty color right on top. A little bit of crunch for these onion bits. And the final pretty element, a drizzle of olive oil. 